Hello everyone and welcome to the Ann Arbor Summer Festival. My name is Dawn and this is my daughter Ella. Ella is going to be in the first grade at Abbott Elementary School. And we are here to do a craft with you today. We're going to make decorative birdhouses. So that means birdhouses for not real birds, but just the kind you'll keep around your own house. And they might look something like this, but your birdhouse might look completely different. That's going to be the fun part of this project. So first, we should talk about the different supplies that you're going to need for your project. What Ella is showing right here is an example of string. You're going to need some kind of string. So maybe, maybe it's yarn, maybe it's twine. Or maybe it's pipe cleaner. Or maybe it's a pipe cleaner. Exactly. So you'll need some kind of string like this. And maybe as we're telling you about the different lists of like the different things that you'll need, maybe a grown-up in your house can go and get them for you. So that's one thing you're going to need. Another thing you're going to need are scissors. Adult scissors for adults, kid scissors for kids. Another thing you're going to need is tape. Tape. So Ella has a couple of examples here. You can use masking tape, you can use scotch tape, you could use duct tape. Duct tape is great for everything. You can use any kind of tape. You're also going to need a pencil. You could use a pen, you could use a marker, but just something that you can draw with a little bit. Oh, and Ella's getting the most important part. Toilet paper rolls. Yes. Raise your hand if you go to the bathroom. Now raise your hand if you ever use toilet paper. Right. So we're guessing that you probably have some toilet paper rolls at home. But if you don't have toilet paper rolls, maybe you have a paper towel roll. Or maybe if you don't have either, you can just make one. Do you want to show them how you made this one? Okay. Well, do you can maybe just tell them how you made it. So, you take a piece of paper, mm -hmm. then either fold it and tear it, or cut it in half the long way or the short way, mm -hmm. and then cut it, and then tape, and then roll it, and then tape it. Yeah, so you can see Ellis put some tape here, so she made her own, so you can do that as well. So, you're going to need all those things. <laughs> you're also going to need a cereal bowl or some kind of bowl that's not, you know, not too big. So, you're going to need a cereal bowl. And then, yes, Ella points out that this is also a circle. So, you could also use this if you don't have any bowls around your house. Something tells me you do have a bowl, but if you don't, you could use this too. And then finally, you're going to need decoration stuff. And Ella can show you some of the decoration stuff we have. You can use pom-poms. You can use paint. Mm -hmm. You can use fabric. You can use stickers. Yeah, or you could do coloring. You could color with crayons, or you could color with markers. Like, or, or you can use stamps. You can use stamps. Ella even found a bunch of really cool bird stamps. So you could use bird stamps on your birdhouse. Or if you're really crazy and you happen to have this around your house. You can use glitter. Glitter with some sick glue. Okay, so those are the kinds of decorative things. So hopefully you're running around or a grown-up is running around and picking up all these things for you. Because in a minute, we're actually going to show you how to put it all together and make your birdhouse. But first of all, we want to talk a little bit about design thinking. How many of you know what a designer is? Ella, do you know what a designer is? No. No. So a designer is a person who solves problems, like an engineer solves problems. But a designer is also somebody who thinks about the way things look and the way that things make people feel, like the way an artist does. That's what a designer is. It's kind of almost like a mix between an engineer solving problems and an artist making things look great or helping you feel a certain way. So today we're going to pretend that we're all designers and we're going to use a process called design thinking. And that means we're going to do a couple of different things, but one of them is empathy. So we're going to think a little bit about what a bird wants in their house. When you think about a bird in their house, they want a little safe place to tuck into, don't they? Yeah. Exactly. So we're going to make a little hole so it'll be like a little safe place for the bird to go into, into the house, because then it's going to provide real shelter. So if you think about a bird, that's probably what they're going to want. Birds also like to be up high, don't they? Yeah. 
So we're going to put a string on our birdhouse so that we can hang it up so that the bird can be up a little bit higher and be in a place where they're comfortable and where they like it. So that's one thing we're going to do today. Another thing we're going to do today is called brainstorming. Do you know what brainstorming means, Ella? Thinking? Yeah, it means thinking of lots and lots and lots and lots of different ideas. So we're going to think of a whole different, a whole bunch of different ways we could decorate our, our birdhouse. And we can try a couple of those and we could do something called iteration. If we try something and maybe we don't like it, we could change it or try something else. We can keep doing a whole bunch of different birdhouse roofs, like the roof part. We could do a whole bunch of them and then find the one that we like the best and the one that we like the best is the one we can put on here. So that's what we're gonna to do today. I hope you found all your supplies and we're about to get started. Ellen and I were talking about it and we're not sure if we reminded you that actually we also need a piece of paper. So you're gonna need one piece of paper as well. So if you don't have that, run and get it. Okay, we're gonna start with the piece of paper and we're gonna take our cereal bowl. Do you have your cereal bowl, Ella? Great. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the cereal bowl upside down and put it on our piece of paper, anywhere really. I like to put things on the sides so that I have lots of room of scrap paper for making something else later. And now we're gonna use our pencil or pen or whatever and we're gonna trace a circle. Right, so now you have a nice circle on your paper. Probably looks something like this. And then what are we gonna do, Ella? Yours is a little bit darker, yep, great. What are we gonna do next? You're gonna take your scissors and cut it out. Exactly. So adults can use adult scissors. Kids can use kids scissors because it's the right size for your hands, huh, Ella? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's smart. Oh, it says we put them lower, then you guys can see a little bit better what we're doing. But you're probably all focused on cutting out your circles. How's yours coming along, Ella? How far are you? Almost done, actually. Me too. Okay. Only one more step. Snip, and I'm done. You got like a perfect tie on that one. Okay, so we can put that paper off to the side. So now we have our circles. Excellent. Now what we're going to do with our circle is we're going to fold it in half. So this is folding it on the diameter. So now we have, it's called a semicircle, right? Semi means half. So we have half of a circle. Great. So we get a nice fold there. Then we're going to open it back up. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut on that fold. So we're really making two pieces. Or we can tear it if you know how. That's true. Because you can only tear a straight line. Yeah, that's really clean tearing. Nice job. Now what's really great is we only need one semicircle to make a roof. So you can actually make two birdhouses if you want with these two semicircles. Yes, that's excellent. Okay, so let's put those aside. And now what we're going to want to do is take a toilet paper roll. Which one are you going to choose? This one so I can make two birdhouses. This is great. So, Ella's going to use this one. Do you, Should I do that with the adult scissors? The cutting? Do you think it's a little hard with those little kid scissors? I Let's, know I was able to do this last time. You were. Oh, there we go. So, if you want to use a paper towel roll, you can actually make two birdhouses or you could just make one kind of skyscraper birdhouse. I'm going to use a smaller one like this one. Now there's a tricky part, which is putting the hole. We talked earlier about how important it is to have a hole because that's where the bird goes into. The hole has to be cut by an adult because it's really, really tricky to cut the hole. So we're not going to cut the hole now. What you can do later is you can go to your grown up and you can ask them to cut the hole a little bit later. But for now, I'm just going to draw a circle on here so my grown up knows where I want the hole. Are you going to put a circle on yours so you know? Where you want the hole? Huh? Oh, Ella's just picking a hole out with her finger. See? Clever. I already had the hole started. This is how I you use solve my problems. Scissors to poke a little hole. To poke a little hole, and now you're going to trim it out. Okay, great. 
So now, one thing we can do is we can decorate our the bottom part of our birdhouse a little bit. You can see this example here, we just put on some flowers. What do you think you'd like to do on yours? I might just put some glitter. Some glitter, okay, great. Here's the glitter, and here's the glue. And then what we'll do is we'll put another piece of paper down so when the glitter lands, it doesn't land on the table, and this way we can reuse the glitter. A we big, like to do that. big hole. A nice hole for the birds. Excellent. Okay, so I think, so you're going to use some glitter. I think I'm going to use um, some crayons. You can do anything you want. I think I'm just going to make mine a colorful birdhouse for kind of a very contemporary bird. What does contemporary mean? That's a great question. That means a very current bird, a modern bird, a fashionable bird in this case. So I tried Would doing... Would count Reggie? I guess so. That's a type of bird. <laughs> it's a type of bird of prey. Paradise. It's a type of bird of paradise. That's a good one. So look, I did this and it's kind of light. I can barely, can barely even see the blue on there. So I'm going to do a little bit of iteration. I'm going to say, mm, that might not be so great. I think maybe on brown paper, markers might show up better. So you know what? I'll just change it. Let's try markers. Oh, see how much better that shows up? That's great. I'm thinking about kind of making shapes on here. What are some different kinds of shapes? If you're doing glitter like me, you might want it if you got some glitter on the paper and you still want to put some more glitter on, you might want to get another piece of paper and fold this paper like this. Mm-hmm. And then do you want to put it back in here or are you going to put it on? What are some other kinds of birds, Ella? Um, there's a lot of birds of prey, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of birds of paradise. Yeah. Birds of paradise are really, really pretty. Oh, they are, right? Is a parrot a bar bird of paradise? Do you know? I don't know, but I definitely know what Count Riggy is. Mm -hmm. They're really, really colorful. What a peregrine falcon. Are they a bird of prey? Yep. Peregrine falcons are a bird of prey. There's one way that's really easy to tell a falcon from a other type of bird of prey. What type? How? You can see the eye markings, the uh, the mar black eye markings underneath their eyes like cheetahs have. Oh, why do they have those? Do you know? I don't know why falcons have them, but all falcons have eyes black eye stripes under their eyes. Okay. Very cool. I'm almost done coloring mine. How's your glitter looking? I'm just doing a glitter door. Okay. I'm doing two. It takes longer to do glitter. It does. It takes a while. This coloring is not very fast either. I'm just doing two colors. I'm kind of making it kind of cool. Do you want to know a hummingbird predator? 
because a hummingbird, one of a hummingbird's predators is an eyelash viper. Wow, really? It's uh -huh. a predator of a hummingbird. They sit on heliconia flowers, which hummingbirds get the nectar on. Wow. Is this something you learn from wild crabs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm actually going to color in the hole because I might cut it out later, but I'm just going to color in the hole where the bird would sit for now. So I think we can move on. If you haven't finished decorating yours yet, um, you might just do it a little bit later. Um, or if you're watching this on video, you can just pause and finish decorating and then start back again when you're done. All right. So each of us have created a part for the bird. I use some marker on mine. And then Ella is going to have a home for a very fancy bird because hers is covered in glitter. And I have one more birdhouse to do. Yeah, that's right. Because make... I got one to do two on. That's right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make the roof of the birdhouse, this top part that's going to go on the birdhouse. And we can iterate here, meaning that we can make one roof, and if we don't like it, we can make another, or we can try putting different roofs on top of different birdhouses. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our semicircle, and we're going to roll it in half, but we're not going to make a crease. So we're just going to roll it in half like this. And then what we're going to do is where it makes the corner here in the triangle, we are going to snip it. Mm right there on that side yep we're gonna snip that and what's that's gonna make a little space where we are able to put our string through so we just want to make that before we start decorating it now we're gonna decorate our top what do you think you're gonna use for decorating your top your roof you'll see okay so we but have definitely going to use things like paint Markers. Markers are popular choice. I think I'm going to do some stamping. I'm going to put some birds on mine. Some of these blue birds. You can use whatever you want to, to decorate the roof. Cool, you're going to stamp. Oh, a pony stamp. Great choice. Or a horse. It's a wild pony stamp, I think. A wild pony. What kind of bird? Like what kind of bird is this one, Ella? That's a bluebird. That's a bluebird. Yep. Okay. All right. So I put I put a bunch of stamps in here. Usually when I do stamps, I like to color them in. And this Ella told me this is a bluebird, so I'm gonna color them in blue. It could be a blue jay. Yeah, it could be a blue jay. Or a blue bird. Those are two different kinds of blue colored birds, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so I do one blue, but maybe I'll mix it up and I'll do different kinds of blue, right? Because actually maybe it's interesting because turquoise. this is this is all blue. Yeah, so maybe I'll do blue and turquoise and that'll be kind of my theme on this birdhouse. That's a really great idea, Ella. See, we're just kind of brainstorming new ideas. What color are you going to do? Oh, nice. I like that horse. We both chose to do marker and stamps this time. We have done lots of different kinds. So this one we did all in marker. We colored the whole thing in marker. I did the roof and then I had a birdhouse with just a plain bottom and then Mommy used my bottom to make another birdhouse. Mm. I had just a plain bottom and then Mommy took mine and used my roof and then used my bottom of my birdhouse to make a new birdhouse. <laughs> right. And, and we also made this birdhouse. Do you want to show them this birdhouse that we made? It has a very fancy kind of roof. So we put a very fancy string on it. And we just made the roof out of colored construction paper. We didn't do anything special to it at all. This one, of course, we also did with stamping and coloring. We like to do stamping and coloring. We do a lot of that, don't we, Ella? Yeah. We do a ton of it. So 
I wish I could see what all of you are doing so I could see how you're all decorating your birdhouses. Because no two birdhouses are going to look the same, are they, Ella? Nope. Unless people had the same things and they lived together so they could copy each other. That's true. That could happen. I think I'm going to get my, or my orange beaks. Our cat is snoring a little bit in the background, but that's okay. Do you probably have, many of you probably have pets at your house too. I'm glad since we're making all these birds that they're just pretend birds with that cat around. Don't you think, Ella? Yeah. Okay. Mine is colored. How's yours looking? Wow, that's really beautiful. You're putting a lot of detail on there. Marker hands all the time. So this is how I colored mine. I made a bunch of birds. And you can see I have a kind of a theme, right? So I have blues and teals, like different shades of blue, basically, um, for my birdhouse today. Okay, so where we are is that we now have our roofs. They're ready to go. As you can see, Ella has decorated hers in a very fancy way here. She's got a whole scene. Now, yeah, so just like Ella's showing, we're going to roll it like this. Now, what's important is that we're going to be putting the string through this little hole in the top. So we want the hole to be big enough to fit the string through. We don't want to close it up completely, right? But we don't want it to be so big that the string keeps falling out. So what kind of string are you going to use, Ella? I don't know yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna use some of this yarn. I might use pipe cleaner. Pipe cleaner is a great idea. So I'm gonna cut off a length, you know, maybe about like this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a knot on one end. So you might need some help with an adult if you're if you're not tying your. If shoes. you're just using a pipe cleaner, you can just twist it. That's right. Pipe cleaner you can just bend. But so what I'm going to do is I'm making this knot right here on the end. That makes it kind of thick so that it won't fall, slip through that hole. I'm even going to make a double knot to make it extra thick. Ella's put her pipe cleaner through hers. So you can see what Ella did is she taped her roof. So we're going to take a piece of tape. But remember, you need a space on the top. That's right. So we're going to take a piece of tape. We're going to roll that roof, leave that space on the top that Ella was just talking about, and then we're going to put the tape on. Oh, well, we do that. Get a little bit smaller. Great. And then if you have a piece like this, a piece of string, I'm just going to thread the string through there. So it comes out the top, and because the knot is in there, with pipe cleaner is really, really strong. Show us how you to do it with pipe cleaner. Hold it up so they can see. Pipe cleaner, all you need to do is just do a little loop. Well, like, yeah, you just kind of bend it or do like a little loop. Yep, and that helps to hold it in there. Just do, just do random things with it, and then pull it. So now we have a roof. Now I'm just going to show you quickly how you attach the roof to the bottom because one thing you might do is you might brainstorm lots of ideas for different styles of roofs and you might build a bunch of them because remember you have extra roof from when we cut it out in the beginning. So you could do a few different roofs and then decide what bottom they look best on. When you're ready to attach the two, you're going to need two pieces of tape, you know, about an inch long each. And you're going to put them on the inside of the roof, like this. One here on the inside, and one on the other side, also on the inside. So you can see that piece of tape, those, that tape is connected to the inside. And you're going to fold it over like this. So the sticky part is sticking up. 
And then you're going to stick your roof on where you want it. So I put my roof on here. And now here's the tricky part. You're going to take your pencil again. You're going to hold on to it, but turn it upside down. And you can use your pencil to push the eraser side. The tape, so the tape sticks to your roof. Hmm. Can I make one more Yes. Just the same size as this one, not this one side? Yes. Same size as this one? Like this? Perfect. Okay. I got a point on it. So here's one that's all done. And like I said, you can have an adult cut out the hole for you if you like. I just chose to color my hole. Ella's putting on her roof. As you can see, Ella's roof has a very neat design on it. It has grass. There's even, she even made a shadow. See that horse has a shadow? When you were finishing up this roof, you were actually telling me about a different bird that lives on, what does it live on? A rhino. What kind of bird is that? A ox pecker lives on a rhino and eats ticks off them and blood sucking parasites. And the rhino gets clean and the ox pecker gets a meal. So it's a symbiotic relationship. It is a symbiotic relationship, meaning that both parties, both the bird and the rhino, get something out of it that they want. Okay, so we don't have to cover the whole thing because we're going to push it onto here. Okay, that looks great. Gonna be nice and nice and strong. Yep, let me know when you want me to put on the roof. It's really, really sticky. It's very sticky. But it's hard to stick on to the toilet if you want it. I know. Should we try it on? See how it does? Okay, so this is your front, I assume. That's where your bird is. So we'll turn it. Uh, well, you, Ella put a a floor in the bottom of hers, so we can't do our little pencil trick. No, we can still. But we did get it. Oh, good. Yep, that helps to it helps to stick the tape to the roof. Great. Even if you put a floor on with the hole, if you already have it out, you can just stick a pencil through there and push it up to the top. Great. So now we have made two new birdhouses to go with our collection. All right. Great job, everyone, on your birdhouses. Thank you so much for joining us today. And goodbye. Goodbye, everyone.